Today we're going to explore the subtle and refined strategy that revolves around the principle of just throwing more orcs at them. Hello and welcome back to Orcs Pets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we're going to be looking at an example Orc army list and we're going for a very green tide-esque theme with this one, chucking no less than 180 violent mad greenskins against the enemy lines. There are a few different variants of ways that can do well with Orcs at the moment, I'm sure we can explore some more further down the line, but let's start out with a fairly standard green tide. So this list is split up into two major sections. First of all some evil sons, which all of our orcs are, and then a death skulls dreadwild attachment for some shock attack guns to fry some enemy elites. Our evil sons orcs contain 6 mobs of 30 boys, as we talked about in the orc boys video, I could be quite happy fielding them either with shooters or choppers, it would change the dynamic of the list slightly, but I think that both of them have merit. As it is here we've got 4 mobs of 30 chopper boys, and 2 mobs of 30 shooter boys. Each of them contains three tank buster bombs, because why not, because they're free, you might just get some chip damage on a vehicle at some stage, and the chopper boy mobs that we're going to be trying to get into close combat the hardest, each have a knob with a power claw in them, to just help chip through a few more wounds against armoured targets. We chose to go with evil sons for these guys, because it gives them plus one to move, shoot and advance, and if they happen to advance then they can also shoot their shooters on full ballistic skill as well. These few extra inches really add to the amount of threat range that the boys have, and it will really really help with charges out of deep strike, as re-rolling 8 inch charges are just so much better than re-rolling 9 inch ones. The game plan is for 3 of these 30 boy mobs, depending on the opponent, to cluster around the big mech and pain boy at the start of the game. With a bit of clustering up, we shall be able to set those 3 30 man mobs up within custom force field range, and all within pain boy range, so if we are going second, then the enemy is going to have at least some of their firepower heavily blunted by these buffs. We want the tips of the formation to be somewhat towards the enemy lines, to best allow for a slightly shorter charge once the mobs get going. If there are any line of sight blocking terrain pieces, such as large ruins in our deployment zone, then we'll try and hide a fair few of the boys out there. Realistically it's going to be very rare that it will be possible to hide our entire army out of line of sight, but even if we can just hide one of the boy mobs, it could make opponents target priorities a lot more difficult, particularly if that mob of boys is one of the ones that's closer to the enemy lines. In this little castle we'll also have a couple of war bosses, both of which have power claws and attack squeaks, they're mainly there to allow units to advance and charge, but they certainly are no slouch in close combat themselves, and if we're expecting some heavy hitters to be advancing towards us, then I'll have low thresholds for giving one of them Dakilla Claw and a biggest boss stratagem to make one extra hitty in close combat. That weird boy has been upgraded to a warp head with Dad Jump and Warpath. He will be trying to jump a third mob of boys across the table turn 1. Hopefully we'll set up one of our 30-man boy blobs towards the backfield somewhere out of line of sight, and not within custom force field range, I will jump these guys across turn 1. If they're a chopper mob, then they could be having 5 attacks on the charge out of deep strike, which would be very nice indeed. From there, the weird boy will be trying to jump other mobs, or maybe even the shock attack guns around, if we desperately need lines of sight on key enemy units. From there, the rest of the tide just boils towards the enemy, completely gumming up the midfield and midfield objectives, and forcing the enemy to back right off unless they want to get hit by about a million chopper attacks. Depending on the exact opponent, I'd typically be wanting to put two of the units in deep strike reserve via the teleporter stratagem. It's a bit pricey at two points per, but it means additionally to the boys that we have on the table, we have two enormous charge threats lurking off the board, ready to reinforce our lines if the boys start to run dry, or potentially opening up a whole new front, and forcing the opponent to have to screen out their army all game long. Finally, we have a Death Skulls Battalion, and this one's been upgraded to the Dreadward Attachment for access to the souped up shocker, which is their relic shock attack gun that allows them to get twice the number of shots. This guy also has the big killer boss, this gives him plus one to wound enemy vehicles, meaning that, that shock attack gun is a really reliable source of damage, and if you feed it a reroll or two, and use the custom ammo stratagem from the Dreadwar that allows it to shoot twice, this thing has an absolutely credible chance of deleting virtually any target in the game. Occasionally you can roll very low for it, it is pretty random, but with AP5, D6 damage, and in theory up to 4 D6 shots coming out of the thing per turn, plus death score rerolls, we really do have every chance of just vaporising a hard enemy target. To back him up, we have a couple of mates, big mechs with shock attack guns themselves, and they all have grot oilers which will help protect them against snipers more than anything else, although they can just go in for the rerolls if snipers aren't a worry. Having three very shooty characters that can't be shot will definitely be a frustration for the enemy, you'll have a guaranteed source of decent firepower to hopefully be able to delete the few key threats that you need each turn, because most of our list is infantry, 
Focusing on anything with a high rate of fire is ideal. If we can vaporize any Space Marine aggressors or Lehman Ross Punisher attacks, then we absolutely certainly will do. I'd certainly be considering using the Weird Boy to jump the mech around with the souped up shocker if it helps him get a key line of sight on an enemy unit that might threaten to change the game. Last but not least, we have three units of Gretchen, which help us fill out the battalion and get us a bunch of command points. These guys could be used depending on the game. Unfortunately, they can't be used as drop shields for the evil sons, as they lack the same clan, but they can either secure us backfield objectives, prevent enemy deep strikers, or maybe venture out into no man's land and try and take some midfield objectives, and any fire that they draw over the boys is a massive positive. They're primarily there for the command points anyway. Talking of stratagems, there's plenty that we can use with these guys. We do have to pay one in setup for the Dreadwar and one for the Weird Boy, and potentially a couple more if we are souping up one of the war bosses with the Killer Claw and the biggest boss. That still gives us a whopping 14 to play with, and Orcs have some awesome stratagems. Custom ammo for the souped up shocker is going to be a big one. I'm sure that will deplete a few, but we'll also absolutely be looking out for opportunities to use Endless Green Tide whenever one of our mobs of Orc Boys is depleted below half strength. Three command points to return another 20 orc boys to the field and add to the weight of numbers is something that your opponent really won't thank you for and might give them some interesting target priority dilemmas, really making them want to wipe out the last few units in the squad. Another great option is fighting again with a big mob of boys to get a whole ton more strength 4 attacks or potentially with our souped up war boss. I think that this list has some very good midfield control and against an unwary gunline you might be able to jump a whole load of boys into combat and potentially win the game very quickly as you lock up shooting units. I think they'll struggle a lot more against things like space marines with auspect scan and particularly things like assault centurions and aggressors with loads and loads of shots and eliminators will certainly give most orc lists a pause being able to snipe off key characters. Honestly though, I think that this should do fairly well on objectives in most games, and isn't even all that easy to get kill points off, as most of the army is either 30 strong boy mobs, characters, or 10 grot squads that are really low on the priority list. There are definitely a bunch of variants that we could play with this list. We could perhaps throw in Gaskell instead of one of the deep strike mobs and give your opponent a really enormous scary threat. We could potentially swap out a load of boys and maybe some big mechs for a whole ton of smasher guns. I'm sure we'll have lots to say about them in the future. And maybe if bike characters are allowed, then they might be a preferable option to some of these that we have here. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the list down in the comments and what sort of toys you might add to a central green tide core to give your take on a competitive orc list. Thanks very much for listening to Orspets Tactics. If you'd like to hear more Orc videos, then feel free to subscribe. We have them coming out fairly regularly, around about twice a week at the moment. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page that's down in the description below, as well as helping keep these videos coming. You get to see new videos earlier than everyone else, vote on what sort of videos come next, and the occasional prize draw, where I post out a few free miniatures. If that's anything that would interest you, or you'd just like to help support the videos, please check out the link down in the description below. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.